Hi guys, Dr. Kat Feast from Central New Mexico Community College. We're into our second to last video on the brain. We'll focus here on the functional brain systems. A functional brain system is really a bunch of neurons pretty well spread throughout big regions of the brain that all work together. And so we therefore have two functional brain systems. The limbic system is often also called the emotional brain. It's located primarily in the forebrain, meaning, remember that the forebrain vesicle includes the cerebrum as well as the diencephalon. While the reticular formation system, it is going to be located in the hindbrain primarily, especially the brain stem. So there are various parts in the forebrain, that is the cerebrum and the diencephalon, that make up or help form our limbic system. And most of these brightly colored region structures indicate the, the parts that we consider to be part of the limbic system. Now, by, by no means all of them are listed here. Um, but certainly the corpus callosum and the fornix, so right here you have the corpus callosum, here you have the fornix, maybe I should mark these a little bit better. So here's your corpus callosum, here's the F for fornix, and then in between you have the septum pellucidum, which is that membrane that separates the two lateral ventricles. Then we see just superior to the corpus callosum. So here is the corpus callosum and hugging the corpus callosum superiorly in that bright green region is a, is a region of the cerebrum called the cingulate gyrus, also part of the limbic system. You are already familiar with the locations of the amygdala and the hippocampus. We can see the amygdala, amygdala nucleus here and even the hippocampus. Now you can see that it's sort of kind of, you have to use your imagination a little bit, looks like a seahorse with its more uh, pointier end here. And um, the area surrounding the hippocampus, certainly the beginning of the hippocampus right about here, which we call the parahippocampal gyrus, is another part of the cerebrum that belongs to the limbic system. The most anterior portion of the thalamus, right here in the bright yellow, as well as the hypothalamus in this turquoise color, together with the mammillary bodies, um, also form part of the limbic system. Now, if you think about some of these parts that we just listed, let's, for instance, get started with the, with the amygdala and even the hippocampus, but let's stick to the amygdala for a moment plays a very important role in learning and memory and emotions. The expression of, of fear and, and, and anger and rage and upset all takes place in that amygdala, which is part of your limbic system. The hippocampus also plays a very important role in, in memory, converting short-term memory to long-term memory, that is. Instinct, moods, motivation, very important parts of our limbic system. And then also olfaction. Smell is one of our most primitive special senses, meaning it was one of the very first to develop or evolve, I should say. And you may have noticed that we can have very strong emotional responses to odors. You know, when you smell something really bad. So for instance, we say, that skunks, when we smell them, we say, ugh, that's, that stinks. Um, or uh, um, when we drive by, uh, an, let's say, a rabbit that was run over on the road, we can often smell that and we Im immediately have that response of, ugh, that doesn't really smell so good. Or we can have, you know, responses to smells that are positive as well if they're pleasing to us. When we studied the prefrontal cortex, remember that is that very complex association area in the very 
anterior portion of the frontal lobe and which develops late in life, we mentioned that it is tightly connected with our emotional brain called the limbic system. Because of this connection between the prefrontal cortex and our emotional brain, we can actually choose to react emotionally to something that we consciously understand. In other words, emotion is going to, this should say, override uh, logic. Or over would be fine too. As a matter of fact, you see this happening a lot in, in teenagers in the sense that that emotional brain is actually going to overpower, overpower the logical uh, interpretation of what is happening to them because that prefrontal cortex hasn't quite finished developing yet. So the limbic system makes us very consciously aware of our emotions in our life and they, it, all these different parts help us give pleasure when we resolve issues, when we solve problems. We see that it has strong connections with our brain's pleasure center, which is the center in our brain that is what gives us that high after using uh, street drugs, for instance, or even during sexual arousal. And it manages to carry out these various functions via the endocrine organ system and the branch of the peripheral nervous system called the autonomic nervous system. While the limbic system is spread out through most of the forebrain, we find that the reticular formation system is pretty much located in just the brainstem. But then it has all of these axons going to pretty much all parts of the brain, even the spinal cord. So we're going to see within the reticular formation system. So just imagine nuclei as well as um, axons in the brain stem that are going to move further up into the brain or that are going to leave the brainstem to go into the spinal cord. And so we have ascending pathways that go into the cortex to form the RAS, or sometimes called the ARAS for ascending reticular activating system. And then we also have descending pathways that take us into the spinal cord with the help of what is called the reticulospinal tract. So this term reticulospinal tells you that we're starting in the reticular formation system in the brainstem and we're going down into the spinal cord. Another interesting piece of information to mention about the reticular formation system is that it's one of the oldest evolved portions of our brain or another way of saying that it's the, a, one of the phylogenetically oldest portions of our brain. So it's been around a very, very long time in our brain throughout evolution. Now based on the location of the reticular formation system, meaning in the brainstem, it makes sense that its primary functions are going to be related to those automatic behaviors, survival behaviors, that we described when we uh, studied the brainstem, particularly those of the pons and the medulla oblongata. In addition, we see that the reticular formation system is important in keeping us awake, aroused, and in maintaining consciousness. So when we have damaged our brainstem, perhaps twisted it in a severe injury to where the reticular formation system has been um, impacted, we may be going into a coma, we may be going into a permanent sleep, we may not be able to maintain consciousness and stay alert. Now one of the ways by which it controls how awake and conscious we remain is by carefully controlling all the sensory signals that go towards the cerebrum. As a matter of fact, you may have noticed that sometimes it's easier for you to stay focused 
when you have the kids playing outside and making noise or with the TV in the background, you're not really watching it or just the radio going in the background. And, and that's a way for that reticular formation system to be to uh, be stimulated and therefore keep our whole, whole brain alert and very focused. The reticular formation system also plays a role in, in filtering out lots of repetitive stimuli. We refer to this as habituation. There's no reason for why our brain needs to be constantly alerted of the touching of our clothes against our skin or you know the touching of our glasses uh, on our you know the, the sitting of our glasses on our on on the bridge of our nose for instance because these are stimuli that are not at all impacting our survival they're not threatening they're it would be overwhelming to our brain in order to have to deal with such meaningless stimuli the reticular formation system has overlapping functions with the basal nuclei and the cerebellum in helping us maintain muscle tone and balance and posture. Its location, remember, is in the brainstem where we find our cardiovascular center, so both the cardiac and vasomotor center together are uh, part of what we call the cardiovascular centers, or center, which regulate our heart rate and blood pressure, and also the respiratory centers. And so the way, uh, or so the reticular formation system is going to affect muscle tone in our heart, muscle tone in our smooth muscle, and muscle tone in the skeletal muscles such as that are important in breathing, such as our diaphragm, for instance. Finally, our reticular formation system has neurons that uh, carry pain sensory information into the cerebral cortex while pain numbing pathways, better referred to as analgesic pathways, have their origin in the reticular formation system in the brainstem. And they, of course, are going to be descending pathways. So this wraps up our discussion of the two functional brain systems, which we've kept pretty short. These are rather complex regions in the brain, and we've just touched the surface. Uh, with regards to what they do, but that's as far as we will go for this particular class. So next in line is our last video, where we're going to focus on the various ways in which our brain is protected.